o'clock in the morning. Mr. Bottle isn't even awake yet. What I have to say to him is very urgent. He was up very late last night and left orders not to be disturbed until 11 o'clock. The news that I have for him warrants interrupting his sleep. But he- I'll take full responsibility. Go wake Mr. Bodwell and tell him that Mr. Walter Raymond is here and that I need to speak with him immediately. Very well, sir. <coughs> I told him you were here. Thank you. He'll be right out. I'll leave you. Miss, does Mr. Bodwell usually eat breakfast? Yes. In that case, bring some for me. We'll eat together. Very well. What's happening? A disaster? Oh, no, sir. Then why are you disturbing me at my home at 8 in the morning? For a very good reason, sir. You could have waited until this afternoon. No, sir. Go on, then. I'm listening. Mr. Bodwell, I know that you are a big-hearted man. And when you know the reason that has led me to come here... Hurry up and get to the point. What is wrong? Nothing. Everything is going very well, sir. Then what are you doing here? I've come to ask you for a raise. What? I know that my current wage is reasonable, but given the fact that I... Are you kidding me? Sir, I won't dare. You have the gall to wake me up at 8 o'clock in the morning to ask me for a raise? But when you know... But I don't want to know. If you would allow me to explain... You can tell me all this at the office tomorrow. If I understand correctly, your answer is unfavorable. Listen. It is 8 o'clock in the morning, and if I had any advice to give you... Here's your breakfast, Mr. Barlow. Put it there. Why did you bring two cups? This gentleman said that you had breakfast with you. What? Yes, I didn't think our conversation would be so brief, so I asked Are you to... completely crazy? Love makes you crazy. Love? Yes, sir, I am in love. And what do you want me to do about it? Well, there's an adorable girl that will ask this very morning to marry me. That's why I rush things, because it's actually impossible for me to be worthy of her hand if I'm not earning enough money to give her the quality of life her parents have given her. Your love life does not interest me. Love and money often go together. Uh-huh. Please do me the favor of returning to your kitchen. My <laughs> 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 girl. My <laughs> girl, huh? Okay. Fine, my old chap. Let's get this over with. How much do you earn now? Two hundred dollars per month. And how much money would you like to earn? Two thousand dollars for me. <laughs> Put your eyes on Mr. Bobble, it's an excellent record. <laughs> Mr. Raymond. When you call me Mr. Raymond, I immediately feel like you have something against me. I prefer that you call me my old chap. Well, my old chap. Before answering me in any definitive way, I'd like to leave you a few minutes to think. I don't need to think about this. I recognize that the spontaneity of my request has surprised you, but I insist you take it into full consideration. And I feel that if we were drinking a cup of tea together, we'd be able to chat more calmly. This is outrageous. Sir, I entered your services four years ago as an employee with a salary of $120 per month. As a student as you are, you immediately noticed I was able to do much more than I was originally hired for. Well, this my old chap I know. Can I have some sugar? But... One and a half, if you please. Excuse me for this brief function of my various functions within your business, but I assure you it is essential. If it is leading to you asking me for $2,000 per month, then you're wasting your time and mine. I would, however, like to finish my presentation. You are persistent. That is one of the qualities that may be earned your confidence. I agree, but this time you are not going to convince me. Thank you. Uh, when four years ago I entered your services, your business, although already flourishing, was far from having the importance it has today. It's now one of the largest companies in New York, and its profits have increased tenfold. Yes. Thanks to my idea to incorporate the Brazilian baobab tree sap into our soaps. Which we've actually never been able to obtain. That wasn't important. But what was important was to convince the public of the beneficial effects of the baobab sap, and then let them assume that our soaps had some in it. This was done thanks to a huge advertising campaign, which I organized. <laughs> Incidentally, your idea of chlorophyll was a bit outdated. Ah, with the hundreds of thousands of dollars that I spent in that project, if it wouldn't have succeeded, I would have been bankrupt. But it has succeeded, and you've made a fortune. To conclude, my persistence eventually convinced you to market a new shampoo, a microfusion hairspray, a deliberatory paste, and finally our wonderful new beauty cream, which has allowed us to launch my famous slogan, Baobabize yourself from head to toe using all the Bogwell products. And to conclude, my latest great wave or great contest, become a movie star by purchasing all six Bogwell soaps. I have taken all the risk in this endeavor. And reaped all the rewards as well. 
And I conclude by observing that my new organizational structure has reduced your workload to a strict minimum of signing a few papers now and then. It sounds like you are in charge of the company. I wouldn't go that far. I just want to highlight a couple of ways that I make your life easier. But I'll come back to that topic, because now I would like to speak to you of love. <laughs> Me? As I've had the honor of performing you, I'm going to propose this very morning, and as I've explained, it's to a girl who has living in an affluent environment. So far, I personally have never been very great, and I've never asked you for more money. But today is not to the businessman who I've taken the liberty to speak to. It's to a big-hearted man who had worked and built a ruin in the happiness of a young home. <laughs> big-hearted man? Let's not exaggerate here. Yes, yes, sir, I know you. My big heart will not go as far as giving you $2,000 per month. Life is difficult for a young couple starting out. As well as time Mr. Chismadia the last time I saw him. Mr. Chismadia? Yes, the owner of Novi Soaps, your biggest competitor. Yes, of course I know him. How do you know him? He insisted on meeting with me. He's a little concerned about how much competition we are for him. He wanted to know how much money I was making, and he implied that... Yes, yes, I know Chismadia's methods. But if he thinks he can scare me, you can tell him on my behalf that he is entirely mistaken. One day I will crush him like a cup of bog. And that day is not far away. Much sooner than you think. I'd love to see the look on his face when he learns that you've given me a no, raise. Me too. <laughs> Should uh, I call him out? Uh, call? To tell him you've given me a raise. Ah, uh, wait a second. Uh, why don't you tell me more about your fiance? Oh, sir, she is a darling. And her parents? Charming people. Well off. Very well off, sir. That's why I can't allow myself, with only a salary of $200, to even aspire to marry your daughter. Ugh. Let me think. $1,500 per month and don't ask for more. Oh, thank you, sir. It's more than I expected. I thought she's mad. I offered you $2,000. Me? I never said such a thing. I offer two thousand in hopes of getting one thousand, but I realized I underestimated your generosity. Uh, if I had known. Although Mr. Chismania was ready to give me everything that I wanted, but I prefer to stay with you. That's good of you. So I can count on a salary of one thousand five hundred dollars per month. Uh, Fifteen hundred. Yes. Go propose to your darling. Thank you, sir. Good luck. <coughs> Chismania. Bobwell, I have the great honor of requesting your daughter's hand in marriage. What? Yes, sir, she is the one. No. Yes. Oh. Yes. Ah, do you know my daughter? We met quite by chance ago, a year and a half, at the Fifth Avenue Tennis Club. I didn't know who she was at the time, and since then I haven't dared tell her that I work for you. I was only earning a salary of $140 a month, and that made me feel insecure. Listen, you are a very good fellow, but... I must confess that I had imagined a much more glamorous marriage for my daughter. That's why I'm also asking you today for the title of Sales Manager for Bodwell Establishments. <laughs> that title for the $1,500 will enable you to give her the lifestyle she has known so far. I had heard that you intended to give her a $300,000 dowry. Ah, uh, who told you that? She did. Firstly, that is entirely mistaken, and secondly, I would never let my daughter marry a man who is only after her money. Mr. Bogdall, I don't want to marry your daughter for her money, but only for her love. And to prove to you my good intentions, I will give your daughter my entire fortune. And how much could someone like you have? $626,873.28. <laughs> what? $626,873.28. How did you get that much money? I stole from you. What? Stay calm, Mr. Bobwell. I'll explain it to you. This has to be a joke. Mr. Bobwell, I would not have the audacity to make jokes with you. You called me? Yes, bring two aspirins for Mr. Bobwell immediately. He doesn't feel well? Not anymore. Hurry. <laughs> I'll report you to the police. Report me to the police? Why? Why? To look you up, of course. Although, I would never believe that you would do such a thing. Here, have some aspirin. Stop bothering me with aspirin! Yes, but be prepared to return at any moment. I still have more things to tell Mr. Bogdell. Very well, sir. $623,876.28? <laughs> Actually, $655,680 over the past year and a half, plus my salary of $140 a month, but I also had a few expenditures. I'll report to the police. Reporting to the police? Mr. Bobwell, think about it. I'm not trying to run away with the money. On the contrary, here's the being come to an amicable arrangement. An amicable arrangement? With a thief? How will you explain to the police that you're missing over $650,000, but not one penny is missing from your bank account? Not one single penny is missing. Not one. How did you steal $650,000 if you didn't take it from my bank account? 
Well, a year and a half ago, you assigned me, among other important tasks, to do a cost analysis of your products. In that position, I not only had to decrease the factory cost of one and a half cents, but I was also able to increase the amount customers paid by three cents thanks to my idea about the Baobab set. In summary, one and a half cents less and three cents more gives us an additional benefit of four and a half cents per bar of soap.
To marry me? He came like this now. <laughs>
Walter and I met a year and a half ago. Yes, yes, at the Fifth Avenue Tennis Club. He told me everything. And when he asked for my name, I didn't want to tell him because, well, my last name is Heffer. Heffer?
I will not change my mind. Yes, yes, I know I care, but there is no reason to. But if I had a check, for example, I would have a much easier time convincing my wife, who isn't very open to the marriage. But you don't think I put the money into a bank, do you? No. Where is it then? Well, at first I was buying gold, but it was beginning to get too heavy. You don't know what six hundred thousand dollars worth of gold weighs. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sure. Then I started buying jewelry. Jewelry, perfect. Women love jewelry. Where is it now? In a suitcase, in a safe place. Whoa, sir, I just had an idea. Yes? We're going to surprise Cassandra. Cassandra? Uh, no, not Cassandra, uh, the other one. Uh, Amanda? Amanda, that's right, Amanda. Go bring the jewelry and offer it as an engagement present. That way, your mother will not refuse to the marriage. You think? I guarantee you. Then I'll go immediately. Getting the suitcase will be the first step, but... Oh, well, sir. Yes? Have you heard anything about Oscar? Oscar? Your old driver? That's right. You don't know? He had his heart broken. Uh oh. He wouldn't tell us the young lady's name, but it seems that she was lovely. But her father was a brute. A brute? <laughs> so he joined the army for a six year hitch after boot camp to send him off to Africa. Really? The army? Yes, he's probably already singing the army song already. March along, sing her song with the army. Because Mr. Raymond is already engaged. Martin, that doesn't 
and read the other one. Amanda? Amanda, that's right. You go hide, and I'll go get her. Oh, this is going to be fun. I'll oh, go in there. No, 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 no. Go hide in the garden. I'll go search for her in there. You haven't told her anything? No, but don't worry. She'll be delirious when she hears the news. Oh, Dad. Yeah.
maid. I must get the door. Please do. I'm sorry, I'm late. Father's not here right now. I'll tell that you're here. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sure your father doesn't want to saw his right this moment. As for me, I'd be very happy to chat with such an athlete. Walter Raymond, sales manager for Bob Bell Establishments. Ralph Carlson. Nice to meet you. <laughs> tell me, you seem the champion of something. Westchester County Fall Fair Pioneer Champion of 1924. Nice! Bl blueberry and strawberry varieties. <laughs> oh good, but tell me, do all women fall in love with you? Hmm. I get the impression you must be a very jealous person. I guess. Able to kill for the love of a woman? It could be done. There's someone who would love that and be the one that would be yours. Listen good sir, I must have a few moments of conversation with Mr. Bodwell. Could you kindly wait in this room? Uh, I won't be long. In there you'll find something to read. Uh, and congratulations once again. I've never seen such a handsome man. He's not bad. And he looks smart, too. Oh, yes. If I was a woman, I'd pick between him or me. I wouldn't hesitate a second. Me neither. In that case, why are you picking me instead of him? I was never asked my opinion. Tell your father it's him you prefer. Tell him yourself. All right, then. Mr. Bodwell, we have a moment to lose. The boy may very well slip on a banana here. So, all is good. Ah, Mr. Bodwell, I have discovered your daughter's true heart's desire. Well, bravo. I congratulate you. Cassandra, let me call you Cassandra. You're allowed to now. Cassandra is wildly in love. Is that not so, miss? Oh, yes. Then everything is perfect. With your masseuse. What? Mr. Carlson. Wait, that big O. Oh, shh. She's in the next room. Since Cassandra's obligated to marry someone, she'd much rather marry Mr. Carlson than me. She thinks I'm not her type. Is that not so, miss? Oh, no. But that changes all my plans. No, no, I prefer that my daughter marries you, but that is... Oh, okay, fine, if she wants to marry Mr. Carlson, him or someone else, it doesn't matter. In that case, I don't want to disturb you any longer. But before I leave, I was wondering if I could have my note back. What note? The one that says I am the father of your daughter's child. Ah, not yet. If it doesn't work out with this one, I would like to keep you in hand. Come back in the afternoon, and if everything is settled, I will bring you back your note, and we will take some time to settle accounts before we can part ways. If you're going to fire me, I'm going to need to let you know about some export problems we've been having. Export issues? Are they bad? They could become catastrophic. Oh. It's absolutely essential we find a solution to avoid disaster. You have no idea what's going on, do you? <laughs> Listen, I may have gotten a little bit carried away earlier talking about us parting ways. We'll talk about that later. In the meantime, consider that you are still a member of my staff, and I am counting on you so you can solve those expert issues. It'll be difficult. You'll need to sign some papers. Ugh, come back in the afternoon. There are some that are very urgent. It'll only take a couple minutes, and then you run directly over to the office. Okay. Here is a request to unblock your EFAC account. You only need to sign here. These are certificates to obtain tax refunds on exports. These are customs declaration sheets. Are there a lot more? Two more. Here you need to add the words read and approved above your signature. That's it. Now you can head directly over to the office. Come back as soon as you're done. Please keep me informed. Count on me. And goodbye, Miss, and congratulations once again. It's okay that you don't want to marry Mr. Raymond. You're not too bad. I prefer the other one. Okay, fine. I'll try to convince him. Go back to your room. Third fiance of the day, and it's not even lunch. Come in, my dear Ralph. Come in. Sorry, Mr. Bobo. I was a little late. You'll never guess what happened. Oh, uh, don't worry about it. I had completely forgotten about our appointment. How do you feel? Not bad, and you? Have you been working on your abs? I haven't had much time, mind you. It shows. It looks, like, it looks like you gained some weight, have you? No. You're wrong. Uh, Ralph, I would like to speak to you about something. I'm listening, Mr. Bobo. First, uh, some coffee. Uh, I don't touch our coffee. Alcohol? Uh, it's not good for me. Uh, lemonade? I'd rather a glass of milk. Okay, we'll see about that later. Ralph? Sorry, sorry, it's this. It's table. Well, I find myself in a dilemma. A dilemma? You don't know what that means? A problem you would prefer. Just like your table. 
No doubt to your shoulder. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a short massage. Uh, yes, you can give me a short massage. In the meantime, we're going to jump. <laughs>
Bob will find That was just a joke, of course. Wasn't it, Marvin? Is that? No, no. I, I thought that, that... How did you believe such a thing? Yes. So, you enrolled in the army? Yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. No, I mean, don't call me sir anymore. You can call me Mr. Bob. I uh, mean, you can call me Marvin. So, how did you get off your commitment from the army? When I arrived at boot camp, they made me take another physical exam. And then? I was kicked out. Gosh, that's fortunate. But why were you kicked out? You seem to be in perfect health. You have to forgive me, Mrs. Bottle, but I have flat feet. Flat feet? My God, how amusing. You heard that, Marvin. He has flat feet. Well, oh, come on, Marvin. Let's let these two children talk alone. They certainly have a lot of things to say. Remember when we were engaged? Listen to me chatting away. See you later. Everywhere. 
What are you doing? I'm calling the police. But wait until I finish the explaining. <laughs> then you can call the police. How did you steal another six hundred fifty thousand dollars from me? Well, earlier today, I made you sign some papers. Remember? Yes. Among those papers, I inserted a blank sheet, which I folded, like so. Like and that then I asked you to add the words "read and approved" above your signature. Ah! You won't get away with it this time. What are you doing? I'm calling the police. But wait until I finish my story. So then I could add whatever I wanted on the blank sheet. In this case, power of attorney over your accounts. So power of attorney over your accounts, I first went to the bank. I discovered that excluding liens on your portfolio, the credit you had already drawn, and the grant you cash, I was able to draw a check for $630,500. Up a couple thousand there so your account would be completely empty. The bank gave that much money without any explanation. You know that for several months now, I've been taking care of your banking transactions. This allowed me to become good friends with the bank manager. He was only a little surprised and said, you never know what to expect from Mr. Bodwell, and then he did. Cuckoo? Exactly. The manager? He shall hear about this. What are you doing? I'm calling the police. Again, let me finish. You're not finished. No. <laughs> because after going to the bank, I went to control the safes and cash registers at the factory and headquarters. Don't forget that's the 15th and that the employees were to be paid tonight. I took almost $15,000 from money put aside for that. Are you done? May I phone the police now? I've already informed the police. Yeah, good. Here's a copy of the letter that I sent to the police chief. Here, read it. To the police chief, <coughs> I would like to inform you that the owner of Butwell Establishments, Marvin Butwell, has asked me to take off all the money available from his bank accounts, ah, as well as all the money from his offices. Ah! It's the next part that's interesting. From what I can understand, Mr. Bodwell is about to flee the country after converting the money that he will lock up in a suitcase! Ah! Upon reflection, I think I may have exaggerated when he used the term stole. After all, you took a suitcase that belonged to me. Really, I was simply reimbursing myself. There's a fun bit at the end of the letter. Mr. Bodwell's actions can be explained by a mental breakdown he seems to be having, evidenced predominantly by the amount of incoherent statements he has been making lately. You're trying to make me look crazy! Wait, you'll see. That is why I'm informing you of his actions in the hope that it will be possible for you to act before it is too late. Signed, Walter Raymond, the sales manager for Bodwell Establishment. Ah, soon I'll be telling the truth and it will be me who they will believe. Not if you find a suitcase full of jewelry here. Ah. Any explanation you did would appear completely implausible. We'll see if they believe me or not. Be sensible, Mr. Bodwell, and read the passage from the letter. Mr. Bodwell's actions can be explained by a mental breakdown he seems to be having. Hello? Good afternoon. I would like to speak to the police chief. Mr. Butler speaking, the owner of the bit bit the salt manufacturer. Yes, that's right. Sir, I'm calling you to inform you that contrary to the letter that you will receive, I am absolutely not crazy. I have fell into the spell of a thief who now robs me and slanders my name. Where do I live? 1257 Madison Avenue. Thank you. I'll file a complaint. Goodbye. Did you hear that? Mr. Boswell, I propose a trade. If you return the jewelry that I see is belonging to me, I will return to you the $650,000 that doesn't. Wait. You're telling me that you will return the money? If you give back the jewelry. Good. I accept your proposal. Thank you, Mr. Boswell. Uh, you'll also give back the note I signed? Thanks, you asked me so nicely. Then let's get on with it. I have the suitcase containing $650,000 in the garden. That wasn't wise. I suspected our conversation would have a happy outcome. That's it. I still have it. I will give him permanent suitcase and soon the birds that part the driver will bring you back my jewels. This is it, Mr. Bogwell. Give my notes. Ah, yeah. Here it is. Only the jewelry remains. Only the jewelry. Thank you, Mr. Bodwell. You're a good man. You too, my dear Walter. What a pity you won't become my father-in-law. I agree. Goodbye! <laughs> oh, Mr. Bodwell, I just want to inform you that I didn't send that letter to the police chief. But, wait, that my phone call will seem completely incomprehensible. Hello? I would like to speak to the police chief again. <coughs> yes, Martin Bodwell. Sir, I call you to ask you to please ignore my earlier call. 
fault. It was all a misunderstanding, but everything has been arranged. Thank you. Goodbye. Marvin, I'm trying to make the invitation list. In my opinion, we should have a small private ceremony. No more than 300 people. Do you think that we have to invite the Johnsons? Do whatever you want. If they come with their children, they'll be ten and all. Perhaps that's a little much. In any case, we're obligated to invite Clarence Worthington III and his family. Do whatever you want. How much do you bet that it's more bad news? Well, open it and we'll see. <sighs> have you phoned the employment agency yet about getting a new mate? I am tired of getting the door myself. Yes, they promised to send one over this evening. Ah, good.
When I saw your daughter on, on that other guy's lot, I saw Red. I, I had to knock him out. But that was quite normal, of course. Don't make a big deal of it. Besides, there was nothing to make you angry. He was just a cousin who had returned from Africa. Really? Because at the time, I thought you was something else. I, I'm very passionate, you know. At your age, that's natural. The other day, I knocked out a police officer. Oh. And then another time, the trolley operator. It's without doubt the uniforms that you cannot bear. No, it was uh, last month. It was someone who worked at a hardware store. And you don't get in trouble for knocking out people like that. They have to catch me first. Dear Ralph, how kind of you to return. I came back to apologize. It's nothing. Just a little misunderstanding between us. But nothing serious. Please sit down. I already said all that. Talk about something else. Come, my child. Be careful. In addition to Oscar, he's already knocked out a police officer, a trolley operator, and someone who works in a hardware store. I warned you that I should drink. It makes me a little cuckoo. Cuckoo? Cuckoo. Oh, yes. Uh, not you? No, no. I don't think it's in alcohol. In any case, let's talk about something more important. Let's talk about your marriage to my daughter. I was playing Mrs. Bobo that when I found her kissing your cousin. My cousin? I don't have a cousin. The one who just returned from Africa. Ah, you mean my driver? Y your driver? Uh, don't worry, he's been fired. Uh, Mrs. Bobo told me that he was a cousin who had just returned from Africa. Ah, yes, yes, that's true. That's absolutely correct. And that he's going to the north all well, right now. I don't understand, Mrs. Yeah. Bobo. Don't worry. Let's go back to business. Earlier, I mentioned a significant dowry for my daughter that will allow you to buy your fitness center and even more. I will explain. This money came in the form of a lot of jewelry that I had locked up in a suitcase. However, when I fired the maid, she accidentally took my suitcase and left one of hers by accident. Are you following me here? Yes, yes, Mr. Bobo. I understand. If there is something you don't understand, please let me know. No, no, Mr. Bobo. So far, so good. That explains why, when you opened the suitcase, you found the Bernadette's uh, cross. The Bernadette is the maid? That I fired, yes. Who left with the suitcase? Containing the jewelry. To marry the pimply millionaire. Everything is very clear, right? Absolutely, Mr. Bawa. I'll continue then. One of my employees stole $650,000 from me. No. I'll spare you the details to simplify things. In short, he returned them to me. Oh, that's good. It's all in this suitcase. Go ahead. Most men spend their whole lives trying to put their hands on what is there. You're right, Mr. Bobble. I've never seen so much money. No. Here's money. No. Here's more money. No. Here's a bloody no. $5 no. bill. No. This is impossible. That's it. This time, that's it. I'm going Mr. Bobo, uh, the soda manufacturer, uh, you know, the boy, the, 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 the boy Biba, he, he's not doing well at all. I think he's gone suddenly insane. Not me, him, uh, the soda manufacturer. Hello? Hello? Uh, please don't hang up. What's happening now? I was talking to Mr. Bobo. He can hear me really talking about a suitcase full of jewelry and a suitcase full of money. About a fool who stole money from him and a maid who's going to marry a millionaire. The maid who's marrying a millionaire, that's true. But for the rest, perhaps you didn't understand him correctly. I must say, this story about suitcases bothers me. But, you know, you shouldn't pay attention to what my husband says. The key is that you get along well with my daughter. Cassandra, go sit next to your fiancé. I'll leave you to alone. Try to behave. Did my dad tell you I was pregnant? You're pregnant? No, I'm not. Then why would your dad tell me that you were? So I can marry Oscar. You want to marry Oscar? Not anymore. I don't want to marry men who always leave. I'm a big dowry, you know. In a suitcase. In a suitcase? Are you crazy? Where's your mother? In there! Ah!
continue the invitation. No, not yet. There is another mystery that I need to clarify. I had in here another suitcase that was also very important. The one that has $650,000 in it. Oh, I said it! I want to know where it is! Did you not ask Clarence Spurgeon and the third to send a driver over with it? Ah, he already came five minutes ago. Ah! Miss Mary Bodwell, 
But this is my mother's handwriting. Yes, it's me. I worked for your parents 24 years ago. Margaret! Gosh! Oh! Yes, time passes. Let's, for a young man. Let's see, I was uh, 26. And you still live with your parents? Certainly. I recognize you now. Please sit down. What have you done since? Well, I'm still a maid. Never married? No, but I have a daughter. Really? How oh, wonderful. How old is she? She's getting married soon. Oh. Yes, only I'm a little embarrassed about how small her dowry is. I feel embarrassed. I feel bad for the fiancé. Now that we have found each other again, I hope that you will allow me to give her an engagement present. Oh, you're too kind, Mr. Bodwell. And her fiancé? He's a good boy with a very good job. Oh. Yes, he's the sales manager of a big company. Oh. 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 Wait a minute. His name isn't Walter Raymond, is it? You know him. Oh, of course, and I know it. I don't know what about him. Specialist in this morning. But then you are Amanda's mother. You know her too? Of course, she's my daughter. Then you've known all along? Not what? That Amanda was your daughter. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Uh, here you go, my son. <laughs> <laughs> 